Hi, my name is Will Iverson, and I'm the Java product manager for Apple Computer. I'm here today to talk to you about Java and the system software. I'm going to talk about Java that's available today for System 7, System 8, and also the for Java and the forthcoming Rhapsody releases. In January, Apple released the Mac OS Runtime for Java 1.0, the first release of Java from Apple Computer. Um, actually, right now on my computer, I'm running the first example of that. This is a CNN headline applet. This is actually available today on the website, and it's showing the latest and greatest headlines. The neat thing about this is, is I can run this right off of my desktop, and I don't have to have a 13 megabyte browser to look at it. I can, of course, if I'm interested in something, click on it and bring up my browser. I'm going to show you a little bit more about the Java runtime. One of the neatest things about it is the fact that it's actually a fully threaded system. In the background here, you can see running an animation, the hot Java beans. And then you can also see over here a molecule viewer. This is a nice interactive demo where I can, a student could, for example, take a look at the, how this molecule is put together. One of the things that you'll notice is, is that even as I'm scrolling this around to look at, that the Java runtime keeps this animation and the headline news both running at the same time. As you can see, Java is fully buzzword compliant with protected memory, preemptive threading, and all the latest and greatest features, all available today on System 7. Now that you've seen some of the Java content that's available, what I'd like to do now is show you a little bit more about how you actually create this stuff. What I'm running right now is a product called Bongo. It's from a company named Marimba, and it's a lot like HyperCard for Java. You can see right now I've got a whole bunch of buttons and widgets. If I switch to the browse mode, I can take a look at these tabs and see all the different displays and buttons that are available, uh, images, uh, scrolling text, what have you. I'm going to switch back to the buttons, and you'll notice that I'm missing a button over here. So I'm going to switch to edit mode and create a new button. And as you can see, it just added this button. I can go ahead and drag it over and then resize it. And you'll notice that all this is running live. Bongo is an application written entirely in Java. And the power of the Mac OS runtime for Java is to be able to make this software available to customers today on System 7. Corel has launched an initiative to port all of their major applications to Java, including word processors, spreadsheets, databases, presentation packages, 3D graphic charting, their whole product line. The neat thing about that is, is that they're able to have a team that works on a whole variety of different kinds of computers, and the work and the software that they produce is available for the Mac OS, running on top of the Mac OS runtime for Java. What you're seeing right here now is the desktop environment for the Corel Office for Java. I'm going to create a new document. Let's make a word processing document. As you can see, I have toolbars, I have menus that look just like regular Mac menus, I have access to my Apple menu. Over here, you can see my basic word processing environment. So I can type in things and edit, select the text, apply styling, and I can go ahead and add, insert a spreadsheet. So here I've embedded the whole spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's working live, so I can go ahead and type in things. make up totals, and just simply click buttons to be able to, do, to insert the total. I can apply again, styling, all sorts of things, inside my spreadsheet, which I've embedded inside the word processor. I can even do things like drop down and insert a 3D graphic, 3D charting graphic. Javasoft recently announced the 100% pure Java uh, alliance. The Corel Office Suite is one of the first pieces of software that is 100% pure Java, and it runs unmodified on Mac OS, Windows, or even Unix computers. You just simply drag it over and double click it. It's a great testimonial to the power of Java, and it's also a great testimonial for the Mac OS runtime for Java to be able to run such a complex piece of software unmodified. What you've just seen is the Mac OS Runtime for Java version 1.0. Later this year, we'll be releasing MRJ 1.5, which is the same thing as MRJ 1.0, only with a significant performance improvement. 
called a just-in-time compiler, or a JIT or a JITC. This technology, on average, improves Java performance by a factor of about 10. The way that we measure that is with something called the caffeine marks, which is just an industry standard third-party benchmarking utility for Java. Let's go ahead and take a look at the caffeine mark numbers for the Mac OS runtime for Java 1.0. I'm just going to click this Start Task button, and now it's going to go ahead and run and count how many times it can execute each test in a certain amount of time. It's returning numbers that are around 250 right now, which is about right because that's about the performance of the machine I'm running. This caffeine mark test tests not just the low-level underlying subsystems, but also graphics. So you can see it's drawing GIFs, it's drawing rectangles, and it goes through and it even puts up a little dialogue test to just test how quickly it can draw strings to the screen. Here you can see the final results for the test score with the MRJ 1.0. Notice that our final caffeine mark score is around 170. Now let's run the same test again, only this time with the MRJ 1.5 and the Jitsi. Clicking Start Test again, and now it does the same test, counting how many times it can do, it, do each test in a row. The first number that came back is over 5,000. That's quite an improvement. The next test was over 11,000. Again, quite an improvement over the 250 scores we were getting earlier. What technology makes this possible? What a just-in-time compiler does is it caches the Java code once it converts it to PowerPC or 68K code. So that way it doesn't have to reinterpret that code every single time. This process keeps all of the advantages of Java, all the security benefits, all of the protection. But at the same time, it gives you all the benefits of cross-platform code and very stable protected code. So a JIT basically allows Java code to be optimized for the machine that it's running on. Earlier, you saw the Marimba Bongo tool, which is sort of like HyperCard for Java. Now I'm going to show you the Marimba Tuner, which is part of their Castanet technology. Castanet is a term to describe an entire technology for distributing software multimedia applications, all written entirely in Java. Castanet is composed of three main pieces, a transmitter, which runs on the server, a tuner, which runs on the client, and then the actual piece of software itself, which is called a channel. This is the tuner window running in the Mac today. Here you can see a listing of all the channels that I'm currently subscribed to, listings for an individual server to subscribe to new channels, a panel of the hot channels that are currently available, whether it's Sesame Street or how to have some fun, and configuration options for how often you want to update the software, what kind of network access you have, whether or not you're using a modem. These channels are the interesting thing. Each one of these channels is a separate Java program. And the Marimba Tuner manages the versions of each one of these channels for you and updates them in the background while you're doing your work. What makes this neat is, is that you can disconnect from the network and take all of this software with you and run it on the road. This is also a way to solve a lot of the problems that you have with bandwidth. You have a large Java application, maybe four or five megabytes like the Corel Office Suite. You don't want to have to download that as an applet every time, but you still want it to be updated whenever the developer updates it. Let's take a look at some of the educational software that's available with Marimba in the Sesame Street Tuner. Here you can see Elmo dancing, and I can click over to this and take a look at a nice little coloring package. I can just pick a color and draw and add colors to things. This is a fun little piece of Java software, and it was all downloaded over the internet. It's about four or five megabytes, and it'd be hard to tell your kid to wait to download that every time they wanted to play with it. But this way, they have access to all this rich multimedia software without having to wait. Now I'll show you one of my favorite channels, the Discorama channel. This is an example of more rich multimedia that's available on the net. Here you can see disco balls, multimedia, dancing, and there's actually sound that goes along with this, but I've decided to spare you. MRJ 1.0 and 1.5 are part of the Java 102 specification. Javasoft has released a new specification for Java called JDK 1.1. Later this year, Apple will release MRJ 2.0, 
which is an implementation of the JDK 1.1 specification. A lot of people ask, well, what is JDK 1.1? What are some of the neat features? I thought I'd give you a preview of one of those features called Java Beans, which you may have heard a little bit about in the press lately. The program I'm running right now is Visual Cafe from Symantec. As you can see, there are several windows, but the piece that's interesting for this is this component library. These are all Java Beans. As you can see, there are standard components like buttons and checkboxes and radio buttons. And then there are also more interesting things like multimedia presentations, sound, animation, even th utility things like a timer, a calculator, a calendar. I can build applications very quickly by combining these Java Beans. I can drag in two buttons and then say drag in a multimedia fireworks display. I'm going to go ahead and resize this fireworks display a little bit. And as you can see, the Java is actually running live inside of this builder tool. I go up here to this connections button and I drag from the button to this firework. And as you can see, it highlights. And this lets me build a connection. So I'm going to take the clicked event and have it interact with the firework by having the firework freeze. And then I'm going to name this button the stop button. Now I'm going to take this button, hook it up again, and this time I'll make this button interact with the firework by having it unfreeze. And I'm going to call that the start button. Let's go ahead and run this project and just get an idea of how it's going to look. As you can see, I've done no programming. This is a full programming environment, so of course if I wanted to get back and actually write code, I can. But I've just built a complete application which I can freeze a firework and restart the fireworks without any program at all. That's part of the magic of Java Beans. I've just shown you the Mac OS runtime for Java 1.0, 1.5, and 2.0. 1.0 was released in January and will be part of Tempo. 1.5 developer release and the 2.0 developer release are both available now, and 1.5 will be available later this summer as a final release. For more information about these releases, or about the Java technology, or about any of the products that you saw today, you can go to the website applejava.apple.com and download more information, as well as actually download the software and try, out, try it out yourself. Later this year, Apple Computer will release Rhapsody, its next generation operating system. At the end of the year, when it's released, it will include a 1.1 Java virtual machine, which will allow you to run the software that was built with the Visual Cafe or with Bongo, all on that new platform. That will allow you to take advantage of both the latest and greatest Java software, as well as the full power of the new operating system.